So people, they go to Mexico, to Colombia, to Panama, to Aruba, and they come back. And every time they come back from a trip, they come and say, oh doc, I, I was there on a tropical country. Now I need to get a treatment for parasites. So is that true? Or people might say, oh doc, I moved to a tropical country. I'm in India, I'm in Colombia, I'm in Ecuador, I'm in Venezuela, and I've heard that I need to get treatment for parasites every single year. Well, is it true? Or is there a way in which I can know that maybe I can have parasites? I, can, I also want to tell you which are the ways in which you can get parasites into your body, into your intestine, because this is the place where we get it the most. And I'm also going to tell you what are the things that you need to be aware when you're going to get a treatment for parasites. A lot of people think especially in tropical countries, that you need to get your parasites treated every single year. And this is something that was done previously. This was something that was pulled, of course, by the ph pharmaceutical companies. But this is something that you don't need to do. You don't need to be treating actually with medications. You don't need to be treating your parasites every single year because because you travel. No, the best way to know is to get a test, to get a feces examined on the lab and go and check. You can check on your blood too. You can check on your CBC when you check on, on the amount of, of cells that you have on your blood and you go and check for a special type of white blood cells called the eosinophils. That type of white blood cells, if they're increased, they might show that you have parasites in your intestine, in your blood, or somewhere else. It might, it's not the only reason, but it might. But there are symptoms that you can, in which you can maybe start thinking that you have par parasites in your blood, so let's get started. So the first one if you, is if you have diarrhea, or you get constipated, or you get fluctuations in between one to another, you can also think when you have chronic abdominal pain, or when you have these cramps that go all the time and you didn't have them before, or when you get nauseated or when you vomit without any other cause, maybe after consuming alcohol or after consuming anything else, it could be caused by parasites. I'm gonna tell you something. I worked in a town, I, I'm originally from Colombia, and I worked in a town once I finished medical school. And I worked there and I received once a patient, she was maybe 17 years old, and she came with her mother and she they were in her mother brought it to me because she wanted me to get a consultation with a psychiatrist because her daughter was crazy when i started talking to her I said well what's going on she said well i have this this feeling and it's uh, something that is really getting into me that i want to eat all the time napkins little pieces of napkins with passion fruit with salt what yeah when she was describing me this, her mouth was all watery. She went, just by describing this, and I said, hmm. So we live in a, we were living in a, in a tropical country. This should be a parasite. So I got a blood test, I got a feces test, and I got all the things done, and I had it for three days, and we could find inner feces and inner blood we did cultures for that, and we found parasites. After I treated her, I saw her again in two weeks. When you start losing weight, because and you don't have any other reason for that weight loss, cancer can cause weight loss without being without an explanation, but also parasites can do it. So when you start losing weight, people think that they have a worm inside that it's eating everything that they're eating. Like if you have an anaconda going inside your intestine. No, this is not what's going on. People start losing weight because they can't absorb the right amount of nutrients in their diet because of the parasites that they have. When people have are bloated all the time or when they feel like digestion, it's not just not working well. It's one of the manifestations. When people start having allergies in their skin, skin rashes, dermatitis, or allergies in their nose, allergies in their breath, allergies for women in their vagina. It's very, very common and it's related. And do you remember what I told you on your blood test? That it could be related when you have high eosinophils? Well, this is the same thing that you might find 
when people get allergies. If you have anemia, anemia, and you, if you're eating well, you don't have anything else, it could be caused by parasites. Which are the things that you really need to take in your mind and to know before getting a treatment? People think, and nowadays, all the natural things are very common and people look for natural remedies for things. When treating parasites, it's very important for you to know the best thing that we can do is to blend or to mix pharmaceutical treatment with a natural treatment. Are there things that can be useful for treating parasites on a natural basis? Yes. Things like garlic, it's very useful. Things like papaya, it's very useful. Oregano oil, rosemary oil, they are all useful. Which have evidence? Garlic and papaya. There are other things that might work, but these are the ones, especially the ones that have most of the evidence. Are they going to be effective as an only treatment for every single kind of parasite? The answer is no. So is the only thing that work the pharmaceutical drugs? No. Why not? Most of the time when you get a pharmaceutical treatment, these are the best treatments. But you can get the pharmaceutical treatment for three, five, seven days. And from the very beginning, also start taking these natural remedies that I encourage you, please, to talk to your physician first. Start taking them for a longer period of time. Because when we treat it with the pharmaceutical drugs, not always everything gets treated. There may be a remnant and that remnant can be treated with the natural things. So you're combining both and you're getting the best from both and you're just getting a short treatment with the pharmaceutical drugs and then with the pharmaceutical medications and then you're getting the rest of the treatment with the natural things that you can take. Which are the ways in which we ingest or in which we get these infections usually? We get them because of contaminated foods, maybe the apple fell into the feces of cattle or any other animal, then we get that apple in the supermarket and then we ingest it without cleaning it. We can ingest it in contaminated water. We can go to a restroom, sit, and just by touching stuff that it's not ours, maybe it was from a person before that contaminated the restroom, and you get out of the restroom, you don't wash your hands, and then you go and eat, you're putting that in your mouth that came from the feces of someone else. You can have it ingested and recontaminate yourself with your own feces after you go to the restroom and you don't wash your hands. Or it could be because someone went to the restroom and with their feces, they didn't wash their hands and then they went and cooked and contaminated the foods that you're going to take. So guys, if you go, if you move, if you live, in a country, in a tropical country, India, Colombia, Panama, or if you travel, which is my recommendation, get a test done every year, a test. If you have an active infection, get it treated. If you travel and you come back, go and talk to your physician. Or if you have any of these symptoms because you like going to Mexican restaurants, because you like going to Indian restaurants, because you like going, or it could be in any other restaurant in any part of the world, then you might get parasites. So if you have these symptoms, please go to your physician and get the tests that you need to be done. There's another symptom that is very curious and sometimes people don't know it. And it's something called pica. Pica is when people have the compulsion to ingest foods that are not foods but there is something that are very uncommon. So patients start having that desire and it's that uncontrollable desire to go and eat dirt, to go and eat soil, to go and, and get a brick and get something to scratch it and get all that. So guys, remember, parasites can cause a lot of different symptoms. We need to be aware. We need to be all the time aware that this can happen, but also remember, which are the ways in which you can ingest it and it could be very, very easy in which they can get into your system, in which they can get into your intestine. So please remember the signs and we'll remember also before you leave that the best way that you can support us, it's very easy just by sharing this video, hitting the like button so more people can find this content and also remember to subscribe to the channel and to hit the bell. So every time we make new videos, you're going to be the first one to get notified. Thank you so much and until next time.